Hey guys, Urban Architect here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to plan and build realistic and functional marinas in city skylines. I'm sorry that it's been so long since I posted the last video, but events in the past month have had rather significant impact on both my mental and physical health, so it has been a bit of a struggle to get this one out. That being said, I'm really pleased with this video, as with it we return to the channel's roots with a well thought out and high effort tutorial. So please enjoy. Now, before we start, I'd just like to note that what I say in this video is based almost entirely off of my experiences and knowledge of marinas in the greater Toronto area. And as a result of this, these structures and rules and marinas that I'll be emulating will be very Canadian. So if what I say doesn't align perfectly with your own experiences, don't be too angry about it. Now before we start building our marina, we need to decide where it's going to go and if a marina even belongs in our city, decisions that can be made by looking at geography. Most marinas are located on the shorelines of large bodies of water such as lakes or oceans, and you'll generally not see marinas in cities built around rivers, as there really isn't that much to sail on. This is also the case in riverless landlocked cities such as Mexico and Las Vegas, so for these cities, skip the marina. Now, if we look at existing marinas, we can split them into two categories that will be key to planning and shaping our own. These categories are A, marinas that are out on the water and are surrounded only by protective structures such as breakwaters, or by nothing at all. And B, marinas that cut into the land and fit into natural or man-made inlets. Now, these categories are neither exact nor definitive, and I'm sure that there are exceptions out there that don't fit either one, but what these categories are is useful, as the act of choosing between the two provides us with a definitive question around which we can plan our own marinas, being am I freely shaping my marina or am I fitting it into a space? If you're freely shaping it, you'll be using breakwater assets to build a marina that extends out onto the water, or if your marina is set somewhere with naturally calm waters like Vancouver Harbor, you can shape it any way you'd like. On the other hand, if you're fitting your marina into a space, you'll either be dealing with terrain and building in a regularly shaped marina that works with the natural inlet you've landscaped or found, or you'll simply place some docks into some of the holes in your downtown waterfront. As you can see, there are marinas of all of these varieties within the same city. So don't restrict yourself to only one type of marina, or really even only one marina in your city. Now the final factor you need to decide in the planning process is size. Marinas vary in size enormously, with some having thousands of boats and some having dozens. And three key factors work in concert to decide the size of a marina. However, it is in the interactions between these factors that size is really defined. These factors are demand, available space, and competition. Here are two examples from the US West Coast of such interactions. The massive Marina del Rey in Los Angeles has a great deal of space available as a result of the long coastline and sprawly nature of the American metropolis. Demand is also very high due to the wealthy nature of the Venice Beach neighborhood and the large population of the city. The fact that much of the LA coastline is flat beach also means that there are few other spots for marinas. In the case of this marina, all three factors work towards making it enormous. Now this is the Russell Carroll Bell Harbor Marina in Seattle, Washington. It is located right on the downtown waterfront, which is a prime location for a marina with massive demand. This demand cannot really be met as a result of the tiny available space that the marina fills, a size that likely leads to prohibitive prices, especially when compared to cheaper competition in less ideal locations. Here the limited space and cheaper competition cancel out the high demand, leading to a tiny marina. As you can see, these factors influence one another to ultimately define the size of the marina. Anyhow, with all this cleared up and the planning process done, we can move on to the fun part, which is actually building your marina. Now, once you've made all of the decisions involved in planning out your marina, you can start actually building it. And the example marina I'll be building is right at the heart of Elizabeth Bay, meaning demand will be extremely high, but the space is fairly limited, so this will be a medium-sized marina. 
I've also chosen to categorize this one as one that is out on the water, and I'll be outlining it with seawalls and a pier. Also, I'll end up linking a collection with all the assets used in the description down below. Now, the first step of the build involves outlining your marina. And if you've set it in a natural inlet, this step is basically already done. And all you have to do is figure out where all of the elements like docks, exits, buildings, parking lots, etc. will go. If it's not in a natural inlet, then this step involves using seawalls, breakwaters, or piles of rocks to separate your marina from the rest of the water. For the Elizabeth Bay Marina, this involved using the wonderful seawall asset uh, to finish outlining the marina between the piers of the Belmont Towers and the Yacht Club. This is followed by using assets such as Quays or Ronix's docks to delineate and finalize the shape of your waterfront slash shoreline. And then with the seawall and shoreline done, the last thing I did was connect the road off of Queen Elizabeth Boulevard to the pier with the Yacht Club. As defining your points of access is the final part of the outlining process. With your marina outlined, the next step then becomes figuring out how you're going to fit in your docks in a sensible yet space efficient way. And there's no real rule for what direction docks should face, so then it turns towards figuring out how you can fit in as many boats as possible without having them crash into each other when they back out and leave the marina. Right here I've oriented mine off of the seawall uh, because it gives me more room to work with. I think it looks better off of this angle and it's also easier to have the exit route along the pier. And now I place my docks in a way that isn't so realistic but instead works to add visual interest as in real life each of the smaller docks uh, coming off of the main path will have one opposite it and you'll see two boats between each of those. I've placed mine in a more offset pattern because in my opinion it looks better, it looks more interesting and it gives me a bit more leeway to operate with the varying scales of the boat assets, the docks and the rest of the game. Also don't hesitate to slightly change up the shape of your marina outline and your waterfront once you've placed your docks. Now, when it comes to detailing marinas, less is more. Something that is especially true regarding detailing the docks, which for the most part don't need any props added to pass the line of realism. If you feel like you absolutely need to detail something, then you can add some props to allow boat owners to tie their boats to the docks, and scatter a few life preservers and some links for electric and water pumps around the marina. Another thing I like doing is adding lighthouses or smaller markers to the ends of the breakwaters, and to denote the entrances to the marina. Any further details should go into the stuff surrounding the marina that we'll get to in a bit. Now it appears I made a mistake in how I ordered my steps because detailing is barely a step and this step now is the most important part. As it seems that you can't really have a marina without boats. Unless you're building a late fall or winter city, as at least in Canada, boats tend to be taken out of the water around mid-October. Now the process of completing this step is very simple, just subscribe to the boat assets linked below and then place boats along your docks, ensuring to leave gaps for boats out on the water, something that will become all the more relevant once we actually get the boats sailing around in step 5. And the only noteworthy thing I did differently for the Elizabeth Bay Marina was yet another sacrifice of realism for visual interest, a trade that is essential for building beautiful cities in this game. In real life, almost all of the boats in the marina will have their front pointing inwards and the engine hanging off the back. I have placed some parked in reverse, and this is done to make it less obvious how little the boats differ from one another, and to enforce this I've also thrown some motorboats into the mix. Of course, this involved sacrificing the classic aesthetic property of marinas that is all of the mass in a straight line, so it's ultimately up to you what you want to do in this regard, as honestly, either way works. Now, I know that I said step 4 was the most important step, and I think I was right. But this last step here is, in my opinion, both the most influential to your city as a whole and the coolest part, as this is what will allow you to have boats actually navigate your waterways. 
And this is something that has only become recently possible through the release of the Sunset Harbor DLC and through the innovation of an asset creator named Aiki. He has created a set of marinas slash invisible spawners that use the same pathing system as the Sunset Harbor fishing boats to create boats that go around out on the water. I'd recommend placing at least two to three of these spawners in your marina, laying down the paths and then sitting back and watching your waterways come to life. You've built your marina now, but at the moment it remains a set of docks, boats, and breakwaters without a meaningful connection to the rest of your city. Which is a damn shame as most real marinas do have this connection. And we're going to categorize these connections into two groups. A. Marinas anchored by public space, such as a park or a unified waterfront development. This marina fits this category through the yacht club, restaurant, and park that connect it to the rest of the South Bay neighborhood and B, marinas anchored by marine infrastructure such as boat ramps, storage, parking lots, warehouses, and cranes. The Anoxac Point Marina has some public space, but it also has a lot of the not adjacent nautical infrastructure required for both boats in the marina and public boat launches. Now, most marinas will actually have a mix of these two, although the location of the marina will most strongly define the ratio or even the presence of either trait. The downtown waterfront marina will lack much of the infrastructure and often have an abundance of dedicated public space, whereas a large suburban marina will have large paved areas, including boat storage, warehouses, and surface lots. And any, any parks will lean more towards green space rather than public space. Our marina has examples of both, featuring the yacht club and park built in episode 14 of Canada, and now this boat launch that you can see me building right here. For a boat ramp, just build a ramp heading into the water uh, by using either procedural objects or a dedicated prop. Ensure that some piers flank the ramp so that people can guide their boat into the water using ropes. And then add some sort of traffic loop for the cars pulling the trailers to go around and position themselves to back their trailers into the water. For any of those areas dedicated to infrastructure, I'd recommend using Ronix decals to properly wear the pavement out and everything else then falls to the level of space available to you and i'd recommend you check out episode 6 of canada to see a larger infrastructure segment built in the anuxac point marina other things you could potentially build are areas for boat storage or maybe even some form of shipyard and with that we're done our marina tutorial and i hope this has told you everything you needed to know and more and if it didn't, don't hesitate to comment down below uh, to ask any questions you might have or if you want any advice for your own marinas. You can also hop onto my Discord server to share your builds, participate in bi-weekly build competitions, or really just to be part of our community. And if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy content like this, please drop a like and subscribe if you aren't already, as this stuff really does take time and effort and you guys' support is what makes it worth it. And if you want to support me even more, check out my Patreon for some awesome perks including early access to all of my videos, your name in the credits, and access to almost all of my procedural objects buildings, including a recreation of the Charleston from Vancouver. Thanks for watching, it's good to be back, and have a great day.